Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Monday. One of the things I love about going back to standard time is now that the models are actually in an hour earlier. So before I hit the road to go to my regular job at Fios One News, I can see a good chunk of the new GFS model run. And I want to point out a couple of things. First off, what we have up here right now is the European run from last night. Um, this run is not going to be available till later this afternoon. So we're just going to look at what the European did uh, in terms of trends. And, you know, one of the things that uh, it is showing, of course, we have these two uh, shots of cooler air, or the second shot is going to be cold air for Friday and Saturday. One of the things that's happening is that uh, because the blocking in the Atlantic is breaking down, the second shot of cold air is going to come through fairly quickly. You can see here uh, the trough here for uh, Friday evening is already, uh, aloft anyway, is already moving into western New York and western Pennsylvania. So you have uh, the core of the cold air uh, moving in probably about a day faster, and it's probably going to move out about a day faster as well. And you, you can see, by the way, that the general flow still is coming in from the Pacific. We're getting some cold air that's funneling down out of Can out of northern Canada. This is polar air. It's not true Arctic air, but it's a cold enough shot and certainly in line with the kind of thing you would see this time of year. Now, there goes the trough. By Saturday evening, it's already well offshore. And I want to just point out the difference from just a couple of runs ago. Uh, if you look back, uh, it had a much deeper system in the east. You can see it here. Uh, on, on this particular run, much deeper on uh, the, about three runs ago uh, with this big upper low that forms in eastern Canada. So that would have made for a prolonged cold of several days. But we've got a difference now in the last few model runs and uh, the GFS and the Canadian model run pretty much have the same idea. You notice the trough is not is nowhere like what it was being shown. It, it's uh, just basically a bit long wave trough. Uh, and this is for Saturday evening now. The trough axis is already offshore and you've got you know milder air that's streaming across southern Canada. Uh, the cold air is at least for the time being locked up further north. But we're going to get that cold shot for a couple of days this weekend starting you know later Friday, Friday night into Saturday, Saturday night and Sunday morning. And after that temperatures are going to um, moderate some. Uh, but as we move through time, the European last night begins to carve out a, a major trough uh, down through the center of the country. And I, this is all part of the process of pattern change. Uh, and again, it is a process and not a singular event. Do not expect whatever it is you might be expecting out of this. Um, you know, I'm not promising anything. We have to watch and see how these things evolve over time. But you've got this ridge building up in the west. You have strong northwesterly winds moving down into the Dakotas. You've got a nice southwesterly flow developing along the east coast. So this would uh, suggest, at least from the European last night, that some kind of storm was going to form uh, in the Midwest and Ohio valleys and move north-northeast from there. And you can already see, I mean, in terms of, of the structure here aloft, is so much different from anything we've seen in in not only in the last couple of weeks but if we take the summer out which is where you're not going to see this sort of stuff anyway but if we go back to last spring and even into the last part of last winter we really didn't see anything like this so this is a definite change uh, from uh, prior pattern so this is the Europeans idea so let's switch off to the GFS now the new GFS run as much as we have of it in it you know the GFS was totally different with this so it seems to be coming more into line with the European, although it's not quite there uh, as far as the European is concerned. One of the things that's going on with the GFS is you've got several weather systems moving along in the flow, and each one acts as a kicker for the other system as they go along. So you know it just makes um, you know it makes for a different outcome, uh, at least on this particular model run. It does have some you know this trough here. Uh, going negative in the east, but there is another system that now is moving in to the Rockies, and you've got another one behind it. So I guess one of the takeaways from this, in my view, is you've got 
a, a definite change now going on as far as systems beginning to come in on the southern stream. So let's see if that plays out into some sort of long-term break in the drought pattern. The other thing that's going on is up in Canada is that we have basically a reorganization of the pattern in Canada going on as well with little vortex there up in northern Hudson's Bay, some ridging uh, that goes up uh, east of Alaska and on up into the Arctic regions and a ridge that's out in the Atlantic. So we've got this transitional pattern that's developing and it's it's going to be a matter of seeing how what it eventually evolves into. What it evolves into, I don't know, okay? I wish I did know um, because that's what future mar futures markets would be for. But if we look at the GFS and what it gets out of this is that it has a low you know, that eventually, you know, on, on this run, uh, runs across the Ohio Valley and then just basically uh, pops out off the southeast coast and does nothing with it. So, you know, this is this seems to be um, a little bit much in my view as far as, as, as what it's showing. Anything after day seven is, is up for grabs. So I think, that, again, the important thing that we need to take away from from all of this is that uh, this this pattern change process is moving along. Um, what it moves to remains to be seen. Um, a lot uh, is going to depend on what winds up happening in the western states and on up into Canada. Does the Pacific become uh, a much more, uh, much less hostile environment from the standpoint of, um, of a Pacific pattern that would favor colder air flooding up into Canada and eventually coming down? That's something that remains to be seen. Now, we'll just finish this off. We'll look at the, uh, I, I don't have the whole run, obviously, you know, but one of the things we want to watch for is that this area up here in Western Canada, you can see how much cold comes into the east on Sunday with temperatures below normal and still a little below normal into Monday morning. But uh, what we're watching for, and we don't have it out far enough, is a gradual shrinkage of the above normal temperatures across Canada and a a uh, gradual increase in below normal temperatures across Canada. That seems to be starting to happen around day days eight and nine. Uh, you can see that area is getting a little, you know, it's gradually shrinking over time. So we'll ha I won't be able to stay out now long enough to see the rest of the run with you. But we'll uh, put up some posts later this afternoon. So check those out on meteorologistjoechaffee.com and of course local weather on weatherlongisland.com and nycweathernow.com. And don't forget. When it starts snowing, who's going to be chasing all this around? SSStormChasers.com.